My talk today is talking about how you should consider your reporting and discovery requirements before you set up any new system. That is your only opportunity. Also when you're um, enhancing an existing system. All my examples come from our current library management system, Symphony, and its discovery layer enterprise. Symphony took over the running of Atalus Network in September 2009, and it took us about one and a half years of preparation, set up, and training over a thousand staff in from Link Tasmania schools, colleges, and TAFE before we went live in September 2009. Now I spent a great deal of that time, probably at least six months, investigating the data structure of the Symphony Oracle database. I needed to know how the data was stored, what type of data it was, how we could import and export data, how we could report on the data. And it was only when I was completely satisfied that we could fulfill all the report, reporting and discovery requirements of the TALIS network did we lock in the setup and the data conversion from our existing system at the time, GAC. So the first thing, to my surprise, I discovered that the codes within a symphony, in the symphony tables, doesn't actually exist. So here we have the item table and you'd expect these fields to contain your library code, home location code. It actually contains numbers, which makes reporting basically useless. That is the policy number associated with that code. So the solution was I created 18 local tables in the database, basically little data sets, that contained that code or policy name and its matching policy number. Then all we had to do was link the delivered tables to our local tables and we had the codes to provide all our reporting needs. Um, also discovered that the delivered statistical reports were really inflexible and didn't provide enough details for such a diverse network such as TALUS. And the main reason was that when you ran their delivered reports, they were actually gathering the information from log files at that point in time. So we made the decision to harvest the data ourselves. So effectively creating our own little data set of issue and renewal transactions. So again, created a local table called Checkout Stats, wrote a script that runs just after midnight every night. It harvests all the loans and renewals from the log files, enhances that data and inserts it into our own table. So, oops. Ah, here we go. So on the left hand side, you can see two transactions from the history log file. That's all we have. Where it occurred, first one self-issue terminal, the second one by staff. We have the user, we have the item, that's it. That information you can see is enhanced with all the user categories, item categories, when the user was added, when the item was added, extra information about the user and item and then you have very detailed data on who was borrowing what. So you can really get very detailed breakdown of the borrowing patterns of your clients. We have been doing this since day one, 15th of September 2009, and there are now 51 million records in this table. Also discovered that when items are deleted in Symphony, surprisingly, they're actually deleted but it is the first library system we've had where that actually happens. Normally, you keep part of that record for reporting requirements and for audit requirements. So we actually turned off item deletion in the staff client and created our own process, which meant staff issue the item to a special user, which begins our process. The very last step of the process is to copy that item to our own special table. So again, we have our own little data set. And you can see with this example, um, Glenorchy deleted this item that was added in 2012, and we know it was a general picture book. It cost $22.71, and the user they issued it to was Dell WPGL, which indicates they withdrew it from stock. 
So the last user is basically giving us the reason for the deletion. We also decided to harvest from the history log files all the user logins to eResources and to um, NetLoan, our PC booking software. So again, the information is extracted, <coughs> enhanced with all the statistical categories when they were added to the database. And both of these are quite old users added in GIAC, our previous system. The connection tells you what they're logging into. So the top one is OverDrive, and this is into NetLoan, the PC booking software. So again, you can analyse what e-resources users are logging into, but more importantly, their profile. Um, I've created a lot of other tables and views within the Oracle database to make reporting easier, but in 10 minutes, we won't go into those. Just one quick slide before we move on to discovery. You've also got to consider reporting requirements when you introduce new features. So in August 2015, we turned on online user registration for Link Tasmania. But before we did that, we needed to know what the reporting requirements were, which were fairly obvious. You needed to know how many people registered, but you also needed to know how many people registered, but then were deleted seven weeks <coughs> later because they didn't come into a library to complete the registration, the profile of what these clients are borrowing and logging into. So that was achieved by activating a new user category, adding that to the checkout stats table, adding data to these existing records, which meant updating 45 million checkout stacks entries, turning on online user registration and creating our own local table to copy details of users into before we finally deleted them from the database. So quickly moving on to discovery, it's quite simple, but really you can't discover a record unless it is catalogued correctly. So with library resources, we're talking about mark records. And the record, the data has to be entered into the correct mark tag, subfield, and even have the correct indicators. So for those of you who aren't librarians, we, oops, we have a numeric number here, which represents the type of data. 100 is author. 245 title, 650 is subject. Um, we have two indicators, one and two, which do have special significance. And then we have the data with subfields. The pipe indicates a subfield. So we've got subfield um, C, V, E, and that has special significance. Now, data is harvested from Symphony and imported into Enterprise every night. And for that to happen, there has to be mapping rules that took me about three months to set up. So basically, we need to know what happens to all that data in Symphony, which each part, which subfield, which tag, what fields they go into. And so, um, and Enterprise is our discovery layer. So this is the record that um, was on the previous screen. Oh, if I do that one more time. So we can see some uh, hyperlinks. And so you have to also map what happens when you click on that hyperlink. These are the facets <laughs> that are generated from that one record. Now there isn't always, and the number here is a link back to the Symphony record. There isn't always a one-to-one -one relationship between the mark tag and the field I've mapped it to in Enterprise. So for a simple example, series, 830 tag, series Alex Cross, subfield V is the series number, which is 20, but that is mapped to three Enterprise fields. The index, the display, and the final one is just contains the series title. So that's what you see when you look at the facet, but it's also what happens when you click on the hyperlink. You see the series number, when you click on that link, you're only searching this field, which is just the title. This is a bit more of a complicated one, but by no means the most complicated mapping in the system. So with author, there are lots of fields. So we have all the tags and subfields that make up the facet the index, the main author display on the search results screen, the full details screen. This is what happens when you click on the hyperlink, that's the data that is searched. And similarly with other author, 
the data you search when you click on the hyperlink. Now I could spend a day going through all the fields that I have mapped, but we'll move on to the final subject and that's the names index, um, which after a great deal of work um, was launched in 2014. It was the first data we delivered through Enterprise. So the data was actually exported from the Access database. Brad cleverly converted it to Mark, and we were imported into our second Symphony instance. From there, it was harvested into Enterprise. So in 2014, we had 850,000 records, 85% had a digital asset. Now, we have close to 890,000 records, 92% have a digital asset. To still send us data, mainly Jess, in the forms of spreadsheets, work forms. We convert them to Mark and import them into Symphony, and then we have a weekly refresh to Enterprise. So far this year, we've had 20,000 new records, including the new formats of bankruptcy and court records. So the problem with converting the names index data to Mark was that Mark is designed for bibliographic data, author title, subjects, publishing details. So I actually had to create 62 local Mark tags to cover things like name, spouse, ship, age, gender. And then these were mapped to fields I created in Enterprise. Oh. So in this case, you can see the local tags that I've created. And those of you that are Mark catalogues will know that 900 indicates it's a local tag. Um, and this is how it displays in Enterprise. And that's it.